Thank you, Perry, for that introduction. I appreciate that very much. What a pleasure it is to see all of you, and I want to extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you to the new academic year, 2013-14. A special welcome to those of you who are new to the University of Montana. Look forward to a great uh, relationship with you for many years to come. The excitement level on campus is getting higher every day as uh, every day a new group of students comes and uh, shows up on campus and begins their, their new chapter in life. I firmly believe that a great university is built by great people. So I want to begin with a story of some of our great people. Last uh, year, the Staff Senate had a holiday party. And at that holiday party, the topic of scholarships came up. Scholarships, as you know, are increasingly important in the area of student success. And we need to do everything we can to help our students finance their education. The Staff Senate decided this was part of their responsibility, too. And they wanted to play a role in it. The result of that, three weeks from now, on September 14th, the Staff Senate will sponsor the first ever Diploma Dash 5K as a fundraiser for scholarships. I want to ask every staff member who's here with us today to stand up so the rest of us can thank you for your initiative and the creativity that you have in recognizing your role in helping students succeed. So would any staff member in the audience please uh, stand up and let us thank you. Thank you. I want to begin by telling you how much I appreciate what you all are doing for UM and for one another. I hope you've had a good summer and had the opportunity to enjoy your friends and family and the wonderful attributes that Montana provides. Now the excitement begins anew as we welcome our incoming and returning students to campus. The campus looks beautiful, don't you think? Thanks uh, to our hardworking grounds and facilities crews, so if you see them at their work, please give them a nod of thanks uh, as you go about your uh, time on campus. During the past several months, I've had the chance to meet with many graduates of UM at alumni events, during discussions with policymakers, employers, and community members. Regardless of when they received their education or in what field or what they are doing now, they all have similar things to say. They talk about the University of Montana as a place of opportunity. The classes they took, the activities they pursued, all of their time at UM propelled them into a future of uh, opportunity, unplanned in many cases, carefully orchestrated in others. We're actually going to recognize a number of our alumni here uh, at homecoming. I just wanted to announce to you the names of those alumni that will receive Distinguished Alumni Awards. Dorothy Bridges of Minneapolis, George Dennison, a familiar name of uh, Missoula, Jim Messina, also a familiar name, our last commencement speaker of Chicago, Milton Parsons of Denver, and Yoko Takeuchi of Tokyo. So it'll be a great time to recognize uh, the accomplishments of the alumni, the graduates of this institution. But for those of us who work here on a daily basis and who study here, UM is also a place of opportunity. Each day brings new challenges, and each day brings new rewards. I'm going to tell you right now that today's message is going to be one of optimism and forward thinking. I want to use today to highlight the accomplishments of many people and programs and to describe the energetic efforts by countless individuals who make things happen at UM. The upcoming year is going to be one of progress and excitement. Let me begin by introducing some special guests that we have with us this morning. Shannon O'Brien, would you, would you stand, Shannon? Uh, Shannon is Governor Bullock's Education Policy Advisor. Appointed just last spring, she hit the ground running and brings to her job a high level of energy and dedication to improving education at all levels. I'm proud to add that she's a UM alum. Last spring, she received her doctorate from the Phyllis J. Washington College of Education and Human Sciences. Shannon, thanks for being here today, and good luck with your position. Zach Rogala, Zach, are you, I think you're out there somewhere, way in the back. Uh, Zach is our new student regent serving uh, with us for the next year. This fall, he begins law school at UM after receiving his undergraduate degree from MSU. Our student regents have always been exceptional, and Zach is certainly going to follow in that mold. 
He's already jumped in with enthusiasm and initiative, and I certainly look forward to working with him. Zach, thank you for being here today. Neil Moisey is the new Deputy Commissioner for Academics, Research, and Student Affairs at the Commissioner's Office in Helena. You probably remember Neil from his many roles on this campus as a faculty member in our College of Forestry and Conservation, as a former faculty senate president, and the first leadership fellow at the University of Montana. We like to think that leadership fellow position is what propelled him to his new role in Helena. Neil, thank you, and good luck to you. And I'm delighted to introduce my friend and colleague, the guy with the sunglasses on the top of his head over here, Mayor John Ingen. Uh, later I'll talk about many community, community university relations, uh, many of which are happening because of Mayor John Ingen. John, thank you for being here. And although I can't see where she is, I'd like to acknowledge my wife, Mary. I don't, I don't know where she's sitting. Oh, there she is. Thanks, Mary, for being here. This year, we attracted a group of exceptional people to campus to take on various administrative roles. And I want to introduce them now. And like the provost asked, please hold your applause until I've read all the names. But as I read your name, would you stand and remain standing? So I'll start with Perry Brown, who is now the permanent provost and vice president for academic affairs. Scott Wittenberg, vice president for research and creative scholarship. Michael Reed, vice president for administration and finance. Peggy Coor, Vice President for Integrated Communications. Matthew Riley, Chief Information Officer. Lucy France, Legal Counsel. Shane Geese, President and CEO of the University of Montana Foundation. Kent Haslam, Director of Athletics. Maybe the newest person to campus, Eric Gutierrez, the Director of Equal Opportunity and Affirmative Action. Mario Schultzke, Assistant Vice President for Marketing. Amy Capalupo, Director of Disability Services for Students. Rick Curtis, Director of the Curry Health Center. Martin Blair, the Director of the Rural Institute. Paulo Zagallo Melo, Director of International Programs. Abraham Kim, Director of the Maureen and Mike Mansfield Center. Stephen Thompson, Director of Campus Recreation. Leonard Leibinger, Interim Director for Veterans Education and Transition Services Office. Joseph Hickman, Interim Registrar. Nancy Hinman, Interim Associate Provost for Dynamic Learning. Lori Fisher, Interim Director for Career Services. And Jamie Pinkerton, who's not here yet, but perhaps our newest hire, uh, is our head coach for women's softball. So please uh, welcome these folks in their new, new posts. I'd like to also take a moment to recognize our student leadership team at this time. Uh, Asa Homan is our ASUM president for the year. Mariah Williams is our ASUM vice president. And Mike Hopkins is our ASUM business manager. Several of us had the opportunity the other day to join them for a while at their retreat up at Flathead Lake. And I can tell you that they have an ambitious agenda. And we want to do everything we can to help them succeed with that agenda. So Asa and your team, thank you for being here, and good luck to you. Well, most of us spend considerable time in meetings, and I certainly do myself. I've taken to starting meetings with what I call the UM Minute, and I ask you to do the same. Just take a minute or two to tell one another of some good news about a colleague, a student, a program, Something to remind ourselves of why we are here. Sarah Thane is my UM Minute today. Sarah, would you please stand? She's over here in the corner. Sarah is a junior majoring political science and has just returned from a summer in Washington, D.C., where she was an intern at the White House. She was placed in the Office of Presidential Correspondence, where she read and responded to letters from classrooms and young people on behalf of the president. She also took weekly shifts answering calls on the White House comment line. Part of her internship included a weekly speaker series at which senior staff talked and answered questions 
bringing in a wide variety of people that Sarah got to meet, including the First Lady and the Vice President. Sarah is here today. Sarah, uh, let us congratulate you on representing yourself and you and with distinction in the White House. A couple of other things for the UM Minute. On September 13th, we will welcome an incredible person to our campus when we host a special ceremony to award Justice Sandra Day O'Connor with an honorary doctorate of laws. Justice O'Connor was approved before the degree by the law school faculty, by the faculty senate, and by the Board of Regents. Because she couldn't attend commencement last May, we'll recognize her this September. So in addition to the ceremony, Justice O'Connor will uh, be meeting with several groups of our students during the course of the two days that she's here. What a wonderful opportunity it will be for us to have Justice O'Connor on our campus and recognize her again. Here's some more good news. Just two days ago, Professor Steve Running, who many of you know from our College of Forestry and Conservation, learned of his appointment to the NASA Science Committee, where he'll serve as the chair of the NASA Earth Science Subcommittee. This is the highest advisory committee at NASA for science and probably the highest advisory post that a non-NASA employee can have. So uh, I know Steve is not here with us today, uh, but what a great honor for him, and uh, let's congratulate Steve on that wonderful appointment. This is an especially important time for higher education. The nation is looking increasingly for higher education to play a transformative role in the lives of individuals and in the growth of our society. You just heard yesterday President Obama make an announcement about the importance of college completion and the importance of financing, helping our students finance their education. The University, has a, the University of Montana has a special responsibility and a special challenge in this time of pragmatism and competition. I want to remind you of our strategic plan, UM 2020, Building a University for the Global Century, which focuses on five areas appropriate for today's expectations of higher education. First, partnering for student success, seeking to increase the number of people who ultimately graduate with a college credential. Second, education for the global century involves building our academic programming with the quality and excellence and content to meet the needs and interests of today's students. Discovery and creativity to serve Montana and the world, increasing the impact of our research and creative scholarship. The dynamic learning environment, establishing one of the most effective learning environments in public higher education. And finally, the planning assessment continuum, an operating principle for our university designed to maximize our progress and to hold ourselves accountable uh, to, in meeting our goals. So in the context of those directions, let me speak about some accomplishments, some directions, and some challenges. At the core of this university is our quest for academic excellence and innovation. Let's look at a few indicators of progress. We've already talked about student success. It's paramount. So here are some of the latest numbers for the university. Data from the commissioner's office for the entering class of fall 2011 shows that among first-time, full-time freshmen, our freshman to sophomore retention ratio, retention rate, excuse me, is 76% the highest in the history of UM, and the highest in the Montana University system. That's still not high enough. We have the goal of making that number over 80%, and we're working on that. For the entering class of fall 2006, so this goes back a ways, first-time, full-time, degree-seeking freshmen, the national metric of the six-year graduation rate for UM is 48.3%. That's the highest in the history of the University of Montana. It's still not high enough either. We want that number to get over 50%. These gains reflect the hard work of many people, including recent programmatic changes, such as the Exploratory Studies Program for undeclared, undeclared freshmen, the use of EdReady, an online math skills refresher course funded through the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Of the 70 freshmen who completed EdReady this summer, over 80% of them raised their math placement level by one level. The faculty has continually adjusted the curriculum to provide new opportunities in education and research at both the undergraduate and graduate levels. Last May, we have received approval for a new material science PhD, 
offered collaboratively with Montana Tech University and Montana State University. The Department of Management and Marketing, along with the Management Information Systems Program, brought forward a digital marketing certificate. New certificates are in effect also at Missoula College in Health Information Technology and in Energy Technology. You may have seen in this morning's paper an initiative to put in place a cybersecurity program here at the university. The newest issue of Pre-Law Magazine highlighted 25 of the most innovative ideas recently launched by law schools around the country. And it's no surprise that UM's law school is included. First year law students at UM are grouped together to function as a law firm with seven classmates and a TA as the junior law partner. The students learn problem solving skills and how to interview clients. Most of the innovative ideas about curriculum that were highlighted in that pre-law magazine are intended to bring practical training into the legal curriculum. curriculum. That practical training is already a hallmark of our UM law school. Research and creative activity, creative scholarship, are central to our mission as a research university. And we've seen some tremendously exciting recent developments. Nate McCready, who you met a little while ago, associate professor of physics, was recently awarded a NASA grant of $1.1 million for Project Minerva. He'll work to build a dedicated observatory to detect Earth-like exoplanets. You can ask him later what those are. With partner institutions, Harvard, Caltech, and Penn State. That's pretty good company, Nate. Thanks for your work. Andre Holian and his colleagues in the Center for Environmental Health Sciences received a $5 million five-year award from the National Institutes of Health. This is the first ever what's called a Phase Three COBRA award uh, that was given in Montana. So they have done some terrific work in the area of environmental health. Media arts professor Andrew Smith recently debuted to much acclaim Winter in the Blood, a feature film based on a novel by Montanan James Welch. Professor Smith hired many UM students to assist with production and filmed on location throughout our state. In addition to being featured at the Los Angeles Film Festival, Winter in the Blood won the grand prize at Montreal's First Peoples Festival. In the humanities, Associate Professor Jody Pavlak in the Department of History won two prestigious awards for her book on the politics of Chile's coal mining communities. Ray Fanning in the School of Journalism won the Best of Festival Award for his radio piece on wrongful convictions in Montana. Our individual faculty members excel in their research and creative scholarship, and we are so proud of the, uh, the external acknowledgments that so many of them receive. In July, we announced a new initiative called the Blackstone Launchpad Montana Project, which is a partnership between the Blackstone Foundation, the University of Miami, the Headwaters Group from Butte, Montana, MSU, and UM. It will bring a three-year, $2.6 million student and alumni entrepreneurship program to Montana. The program will help students and alumni take an idea and grow it into a successful business. Yesterday, I attended a meeting in Helena of the new Institute on Ecosystems, made up of nearly 200 faculty members from both UM and MSU this truly interdisciplinary endeavor represents a milestone in collaboration between our two institutions as well. The Institute is part of a five-year, $20 million grant from the National Science Foundation. Physical infrastructure is a foundation for a dynamic learning environment. And this year, you're going to see significant work on our campus. Having gained legislative approval for a number of projects, we'll begin construction on several buildings during the course of this year. The Gilkey Center for Executive Education and Entrepreneurship is the result of private philanthropy and student fees. The center will be built just west of the Gallagher School of Business. The $9.3 million facility will be home to innovative programming for working professionals from disciplines across campus. The Gilkey Center will also house the UM Foundation. Lead donors were Harold and Priscilla Gilkey, residents of Spokane and longtime friends of the university. The Interdisciplinary Sciences Building was constructed a few years ago, but the inside was not completed. Both indirect cost recovery funds and some general funds will be used to pay for the build-out of more space, increasing our capacity for cutting-edge scientific research. 
and so that project is underway as we speak. The lower level of the Payne Family Native American Center, which has become just a jewel of this campus, will be finished out this year as the Eloise Cabell Land and Culture Institute. Eloise was a member of the Blackfeet tribe and the key figure behind the recent multi-billion dollar settlement on behalf of Native American people nationwide. The institute will conclude a high technology land studies laboratory, a communication center to connect our students and faculty with indigenous people from around the world, and a small theater style lecture hall. The project, funded entirely through donations, is out for bid right now. A student athlete academic success center attached to the Adams Center has been designed and funded again thanks to generous donors. Our student athletes who spend many hours each week practicing and training will now have a dedicated facility to help them exercise their minds as well. We're proud of the academic record of our student athletes, 16 semesters in a row now with a grade point average above 3.0. We want to make sure that they keep their studies as a top priority and this facility will help do that. During this year, information technology services will improve the housing of our most critical computing network equipment. The new space is going to be an incredible upgrade, enhancing our security, and by the way, it's 400% more energy efficient than the existing space that that same computing equipment is housed in. Lastly, let's talk about the Missoula College in the way of a facility. As you know, the legislature provided $29 million in funding for a new building with the requirement that we raise $3 million in matching funds. Bill Johnston, uh, sitting in the front row here, was our lobbyist and our, our, is our alumni director. He was pivotal to our success, as was Asa Homan, who I introduced earlier. Our original plan was to place the building on the South Campus. We're exploring an opportunity to make a more direct connection to the business community, to downtown Missoula, and to Montech, our own business startup incubator through looking at another location on East Broadway. Over the course of the next several weeks, we'll hold some forums to seek additional feedback, trying to arrive at a final decision within a matter of weeks about that location, move into the final design, and begin construction on this marvelous new facility that will provide such great opportunity for our Missoula College students. In May, the United States Departments of Justice and Education completed their investigations into the university's responses to reports of sexual assault involving students. As a result, we've entered into some, agreement, some agreements which prescribe certain policy and procedure improvement. We have a diligent and creative team working to improve our campus as a model of safety and responsiveness. So partly in response to those uh, investigations, but also with our own initiative leading the effort, we've taken the following and many additional measures. Extensive training of students began last year with the launch of PETSA, an online training course for students. Virtually all of our students completed that course, and I really congratulate them and thank them for their interest uh, in this uh, serious topic. A second generation of PETSA will be administered to all incoming students this year. Our police officers have been engaged in extensive additional response training, as have our personnel associated in any way with Title IX. We've developed a revised discrimination and harassment training for all employees, which provides tools to identify, respond to, and prevent discrimination and harassment. This tutorial launches on Monday, and I thank all of you for those people who uh, helped in creating that, but thank all of you in advance for taking uh, that tutorial. So. We'll give you more information about that in the next couple of days. We have a newly rewritten student conduct code with refined procedures, a new student athlete conduct code, and a new Title IX policy. Independent of any investigations, we have also written a new emergency operating plan to cope with either natural or human-initiated emergencies. The cabinet and our public safety officers went through training this summer and we're commencing what are, what are called tabletop exercises to continue approving our ability to respond to any kind of emergency. In today's world, we must be as prepared as possible to respond to unforeseen circumstances. Two years ago, in a move to promote and protect the health and wellness of our campus community, our campus went tobacco free. While compliance is good, we can do better. We need to do better. 
I'm committed to enforcing the tobacco-free policy for the health of everyone on our campus. Our approach is one of education and voluntary compliance. You can get involved and you can help by politely asking a smoker that you see on campus to just help us comply with our no tobacco policy. I know, for example, that our provost is quite diligent about asking people to help in that area. You may have noticed about two weeks ago an announcement that livability.com recognized Missoula as among the very best college towns in America. In fact, we were ranked number seven. Now, I know such surveys often raise uh, some questions about validity and so on, but the fact is we enjoy a tremendously supportive and exciting community as our host. On any given weekend or evening, in addition to the array of activities on campus, our community provides sporting events, cultural activities, entertainment, recreation, and interesting people who enrich our lives. The recent International Choral Festival provides a terrific example. The community of Missoula hosted 16 choruses from around the world. They sang, though, and we hosted them on this campus in a truly inspiring program. Later this afternoon, the Spectrum Science Center of our university will celebrate the grand opening of their new downtown location. I encourage all of you, as many as possible, to come and attend that event. The center will be housed on Front Street in a prime location, bringing to community members of all ages the wonders of science through hands-on interactive displays and activities. Holly Truitt is the director of that center, and she was recently recognized with the prestigious Noyce Fellowship in part for her work with the Spectrum Science Museum. Last December, then ASUM President Zach Brown, Mayor Ingen, and I signed the Quality of Life Initiative, aimed at taking tangible steps to enhance our university community relations even further. The initiatives focus on areas like housing, transportation, and safety. Let me give you a, a tangible example of progress. Our student senate, ASUM, our student organization, runs an impressive bus service, the largest student-run bus service in the country, we think. They provided over 425,000 rides last year alone. In addition to offering transportation, it gives students the opportunity to be involved in running a business. It does come with some occasional friction. Some of the buses are old and noisy by today's standards. I'm delighted to tell you that in response to community concerns, ASUM is bringing one brand new bus online right now and has another brand new bus on order for delivery this time next year. I believe they've responded very responsibly and enthusiastically to those community concerns. In yet another collaboration with the Missoula community, our Phyllis J. Washington College of Education and Human Sciences partnered with the Missoula County Public Schools this past year and the Washington Foundation to launch a project called Shape P20. It's a program aimed at professional development of teachers with the goal of ultimately preparing students for the transition to college as a critical part of today's educational needs. So there are many examples of, a, of the university community relationship. And again, we are so fortunate to have the supportive community and the exciting community of Missoula as our host. Athletics is an important part of this campus and the state of Montana. Last year, Grizzly Athletics won conference championships in women's soccer, men's basketball, and women's basketball. UM was one of just six schools in the country to have both men's and women's basketball team earn an automatic berth to the NCAA tournament. We will add women's softball starting with the 2014-15 academic year, and the interest already from around the state and the country has been tremendous. Ken Haslam informed me that we had nearly 100 people apply for the head coaching position. He's been receiving scores of inquiries already from potential softball players. It's going to be an exciting new uh, development in athletics. The NCAA investigation is complete, and we now know our status, and I'm not going to go into any further detail on that here. Athletic department staff, coaches, and student athletes have fully embraced the threefold mission laid out for athletics, academic success, athletic excellence, and community service. 
Fall sports are underway. Last night was the great Grizz encounter uh, downtown. We're looking forward to uh, Grizz Nation demonstrating its passionate support in just a week as the Grizzlies take on Appalachian State. Regarding our financial status, enrollment is tracking in line with the budget projection, projections that we had uh, last spring. So at this point, those projections are still solid. The focus now will be looking forward to 2015 and building a balanced budget that provides resources for strategic initiatives that will move the university forward. Our budget is enrollment dependent, so we have taken several measures to improve our enrollment figures. We contracted with a company, Ruffalo Cody, that specialized in extending the recruiting effectiveness of universities by providing strategically increased contacts with prospective students. We also initiated a detailed review of our financial aid strategies to ensure that we're optimizing the distribution of our scholarships and tuition waivers. We have revamped our web presence and our digital outreach for communicating with prospects and with the public. We're increasing our outdoor, television, and newspaper advertising. The collegiate world has gotten considerably more competitive, and frankly, we have some catching up to do. Meanwhile, the class of accepted students for this fall continues to increase steadily in academic strength, with GPA, ACT, and SAT scores significantly above last year's class, and that class was above the previous year's class. 56% of our admitted students for this fall graduated in the top quartile of their high school class compared to only 50% just last year. In addition, this class is expected to have the interesting characteristic of having over 600 international students representing over 70 countries. Let me talk about communications. If we've learned nothing else recently, it has been the importance of communication. When I began as president, I pledged that we would emphasize communication. We have done so, but we need to continue building mechanisms to support that effort. The best way for each of you to keep up with the latest news about the university is to visit the website every day. New story tiles with photographs are posted almost every day, and the lead picture changes weekly. You can help us by sending your good news for the home page by emailing it to thrive at umontana.edu. You can also keep up with UM by following us on Facebook. Now here's a sign of that momentum. Last January, we had 16,000 Facebook followers. Today, we have over 71,000. So it's a communications vehicle that has become exceedingly more important to us. Also this year, in the way of communications, you'll continue to receive 4UM via email every Monday with campus news. The first Tuesday of the month, you're invited to attend university council meetings the primary mechanism for conversations with representatives of our shared governance system. The council has members from student government, staff senate, faculty senate, the faculty union, the administration, and even the community. Our meetings, which will be publicized, are open to all, and I encourage you to participate. You will receive the president's update email on occasion, which is a message that is emailed to the entire campus community, along with alumni and friends and supporters of UM each month. The August message will go out on Monday, and it will be a, re a summary of today's events. The provost and I plan to visit each college or school individually throughout the year, and other members of the cabinet will be joining us on those visits. I'll provide you with a mid-year report in early February, and we'll continue to hold monthly office hours. I ask that you take advantage of these mechanisms, not just to listen, but to offer feedback and to get involved with your ideas. A robust shared governance system, which we are so proud of here at the University of Montana, depends upon active participation. So again, I ask you to take advantage of those mechanisms and offer your active participation. The last section I want to discuss is something called investing in student success. At a special meeting in July, the UM Foundation Board of Trustees voted unanimously to launch a major, highly focused fundraising effort. It is called Investing in Student Success, and it speaks to the critical need for us to recruit, nurture, and graduate more students who will provide the intellectual capital for Montana and our nation. Investing in Student Success has three major components. One, a program of undergraduate scholarships and graduate fellowships designed to attract the best and brightest to UM, 
designed to attract students who are otherwise capable but who need financial assistance, designed to attract students who prepare for college by taking a full college prep curriculum in high school, and for students then who excel in disciplinary, disciplinary, disciplinary specific areas. The second major part of investing in student success is going to support programmatic bolstering of two university-wide programs, the Global Leadership in, uh, the Global Leadership Initiative, now entering its third year, and the Davidson Honors College through its Opportunity Fund. And finally, the third phase, the campaign will support facilities directed at student success, namely the Library Learning Commons in Mansfield Library and the combined weight room, locker room facility for athletics. All told, this ambitious fundraising effort will more than double our current annual giving rate while provided while providing much needed involvement of philanthropy in student success efforts. As I mentioned earlier, just yesterday, President Obama announced his plan to make college more affordable. So raising funds for student success is right in line with that national agenda, and it's also right in line with Governor Bullock's agenda for Montana. I especially want to thank Mike McDonough, the volunteer chair of the Foundation Board of Trustees, for his leadership in bringing this effort to the point of of initiation, and to Shane Geese, our new UM, president, UM Foundation president, who immediately and energetically embraced this effort. Our alumni association, chaired by Brandon Byers of Portland, will play a crucial role in generating these funds as well. In closing, this is a university whose greatness is derived directly from the people who work and learn here the staff members who responded to the scholarship challenge by organizing that diploma dash, the dean who created a scholarship to help doctoral students in his area pay for their program fees, the students who took on the leadership task of improving relations with the community, the faculty members who, in addition to their work in the classroom and in research, are also known for their high level of community engagement, and the friends and alumni who continually come forward in support of the university through participation in cultural events, academic events, and sporting events, and of course through their financial support as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the responsibility to become a great university, and we have the opportunity before us to do exactly that. Now is our time. Let's build for the future, full speed ahead. Thank you. We thank President Engstrom for the challenges that he set before us for the review of the past year of some of the great accomplishments of students, faculty, staff, and others on this campus, and for telling us some of the things that are going to happen to us in this year as we build some new facilities, as we engage in a new fundraising campaign, as we do things to really change this university and to make it a great university that it is, but that it also can become as we continue to move forward uh, over the next several years. I ask you now to please join us for refreshments in the lobby, and for those of you who wish to follow up on the President's vision, the President and I will conduct a question and answer session in the Massacre Theater in a few minutes after you get your refreshments in the lobby. So let me just uh, welcome again those of you that are here for the first time as new employees of the University of Montana. And let me welcome all back to the campus all of the rest of you for the beginning of fall semester 2013. Just remember, we are Montana. Thank you. <laughs>